What's up everyone, it's Goose, and today I want to build a pedal board for my modeler. I know that sounds weird because you have a modeler that can do everything that a pedal board technically can do, but I have a distinct goal in mind. In addition to my FM9, I have an HX Stomp, I have a Boss GT1000, and I have a new modeler coming in really soon. And what I want to do is I want to, for everyone here, I want to make content comparing different things about the modeler and I need a pedal board that can go into the modelers and constants that I can use to test the differences between the modelers. So there are a few pedals here that I'm going to be using and these are also pedals that I use on a daily basis and also I think this will be a good introduction to some pedals that I've owned for a bit and maybe if you all want separate videos on these specific pedals uh, let me know in the comments down below. Also one thing I want to do with this pedal board is I also want to use it as a direct into an amplifier, so a tube amp. I wanna do more videos on my Friedman. I wanna do more videos on the Marshall DSL-20. And I also wanna get more tube amps in the future. And so I need a pedal board that can do everything, that can go into modelers, can go into tube amps, and even into my computer for some plugins. And before we move on, as always, if you like this video, if you like the content you're seeing on this channel, please consider hitting subscribe and like. It really helps me out, thank you. All right, so the pedal board, what are we going to be putting on it? Well, we need the pedal board itself first. And I got this Temple Audio Duo. Um, it is the 17 inch, I believe. This will be a relatively small compact pedal board. It is smaller than my FM9 and it'll fit most of the pedals that I'm looking at today. Um, it also has like a unique mounting system. I don't think I'm going to be using that today, but all the routes that they have here are actually really useful. Um, and I've already kind of measured it out and this seems to be very perfect for what I need. All right, so onto the pedals we're going to use on that pedal board. Uh, I'm going to be using this tuner, this really small tuner I got from Amazon. We're going to be putting a Whammy DT onto the pedal board as well. And this is going to take up most of the real estate on the pedal board. I have this Morley wah pedal that I really love, and this is going to be right next to that Whammy DT. And because I also want this to be usable for tube amplifiers, as well as having constants for the modeler comparisons, uh, I got a Boss SD-1 Wazacraft. Lastly, especially for tube amps, we're gonna need a gate. So this is a Rev G8. Powering the, all these pedals is gonna be a Strymon Ojai, o Ojai, o the Strymon. <laughs> this is the small one with uh, five outputs and it's gonna fit really well underneath that board. So with every rig, we need a tuner. This was actually the first tuner I got on Amazon. Uh, it was very cheap, but it did a job. Um, it's not the most robust tuner and maybe I'll replace it with like a polytune in the future, um, but we need a tuner. So this is gonna go on the board. So the Whammy DT, one, it has the drop tune portion on the right side which is kind of like a Digitech drop pedal, but you can actually also go up in pitch. So so sometimes I've learned songs that require capos, but instead of using a capo, I just shift the pitch up instead. And also if I just want to down tune without switching guitars, I can use the down tune portion here. Uh, I play a lot of Gojira songs to myself as well um, when I'm jamming, so I need the whammy portion. And I think the advantage of using this over the pitch shift option or the whammy options inside a modeler is I can just adjust the tone on the fly and not have to go through some menus. I can just do it here. Whereas on a modeler, I would have to make presets for each different individual tuning that I would need and or just go into the menus and adjust them themselves. It's kind of nice having just a knob in front of me that I can adjust. Moving right along to the wah pedal and I'm using a Morley wah pedal. And you might ask yourself, why don't you just use an expression pedal into modeler? Uh, most expression pedals are crybaby style where they start off down in the down position and you use your heel to push it up. This is actually a switchless, which has a spring in it. So if you let go, it'll always go back to this position with the heel down. And I personally prefer this sort of wah over something like a crybaby where you have to like intentionally push down to turn it off. I like it just to remove my foot and have it turn off for me. Some modelers let you kind of switch between the two functions, but I don't want to buy a bunch of expression pedals for different modelers. So I'm just going to go with this. All right. So the boss SD one, this is going on the board because this is probably my favorite overdrive. It's got the standard mode and then the custom mode. And what's nice about that is that if a amp or a modeler is a little too thin, I can just use the custom mode, which is a little bassier. Over to an amplifier with a lot of lows, I can just use the standard mode to clip a lot of the low end out. And that's why I opted for the Waza version versus the regular SD1. 
And this one is quite a bit more expensive, but I actually got this on my trip to Japan and exchange rates were very much in my favor. So yeah, this is gonna be a really good companion. Lastly, the Rev G8. So this is the Rev G8. This is the closest to my NS2, which unfortunately died. This is definitely the closest pedal that I've found to the NS2 in terms of how it functions. And I know they've updated with the new NS1X and I might be switching this out for that if I like that one more, but um, for now, this one will do. Lastly, the power supply. It's small, it has 500 milliamps, um, which is important because both my Morley and my Whammy DT require at least 300 milliamps. So having all of these outputs have 500 milliamps at nine volts is extremely important for me. In particular, the Whammy is actually rated for 1300 milliamps, um, but the actual draw is not that. The actual draw is about 300. So this will work just fine for that. All right, so let's put these pedals onto the pedal board and see how it sounds. All right, so here is the pedal board completed. It all kind of fits perfectly. The one thing is that the SD1 and the Rev G8 had to be placed sideways, which isn't my favorite thing to do, but in most of the scenarios I'm gonna be using these in, they're going to be always on. So how this works is here is my input. My guitar will be going straight into my tuner right here, which goes into my Whammy DT. From the Whammy, we go into the wah and then straight into the modeler. So you might be wondering where the SD1 and the Rev are going to go. I actually have them set up in a loop. The input and output of the G8 is right here on the end corner, and that'll go straight into an effects loop of a modeler. Or if I need them to go into a amplifier, I can actually have the out here of this wah pedal go into the input of the Rev G8 right here. So they're at the same corner and the output here can go directly to an amplifier. So this is a very morph, amorphic, um, morph. Basically this board will let me do a lot of different things and I'm going to be excited to use it. So let's connect it to my FM9 and see how it sounds. All right, so you see up here, this is my FM9 and down here is the pedal board we just put together. And I'm going to do a little bit of testing around all of these pedals and show you all why it's nice to have separate pedals even when you do have a modeler with all these features in there. All right, so let's get this one out of the way here, the wah pedal. I already mentioned the reason why I have this compared to using an expression pedal and that's because it's a switchless wah. So as you can tell, once I let go of it, the wah turns off, you can see with that LED there. And that's really the only reason why I have this is because I just like the spring-loaded switchless wah. The G8 is just here to prevent extra noise from this whole setup here. So I don't think there's a really a need to go over that one either. So we're gonna be focused really on the SD1 and the whammy. So let's swap between the SD1 and the fractal version of the SD1. So I have my mouse here so you can see where I'm pointing at. But basically right here, this is the drive pedal inside of the FM9. And if I switch scenes, I actually activate the loop. So my input's going into the FM9. And in that loop, I have the Rev G8 and the SD1. And then it goes back into the FM9, into the usual amps, cab, gate, and then the out. <laughs> So weirdly enough, the model on the Fractal seems to have less gain. All right, so these are my settings on the FM9 and on the Boss SD1 here, the actual model, I have it set basically the same way. So on the real SD1, I have the tone at about one o'clock, exactly like I have it on the FM9. And on this right here, I have the level max, I have the drive on minimum. And because modelers have a, a few settings with their outs and ins, I made sure that my out and my in settings here are at default levels, I have the out setting on the FM9, the physical knob itself, set to where they say Unity gain is. So it's interesting that the FM9 Super OD has less gain than the actual SD1W. And that could be the unit variation. I think Brian Wampler had mentioned that sometimes pots can have up to like a 10% like tolerance 
which is a lot of variance. And also why you sometimes hear people say that TS9 sound different than TS808 is likely pot variance. But it is interesting that this has that much gain because I'm not even on the custom mode, I'm on the regular standard mode. So what's nice about the FM9 though, is that you can kind of replace components in drives. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna replace the diodes uh, on an 808 with the same diodes that I get on an SD1. Uh, the difference between an SD1 and a 808, which is a tube screamer, is that the tube screamer has symmetrical clipping. I think there's two clipping diodes and the SD1 has three clipping diodes. So it's asymmetrical because it's two versus one. Other than that though, the circuits are very similar. The model of the 808 on the FM9 has actually more kind of push, more volume than the SD1. And so having the diodes match the SD1 as well, uh, we'll see how close they sound. All right, so that sounds much closer in my opinion. They're probably gonna be mostly indistinguishable when you listen to it. I will say the feel is slightly different. If I wasn't A-B testing these, I don't think I would notice. Kind of feel like I can dig in a little bit more with the actual pedal. I don't know if this is like a bias because analog versus digital. As someone who learned guitar not on digital products, I think I feel a difference. It's so minute though, you probably wouldn't even know. And I've been using my FM9 for so long on its own that it actually hasn't really bugged me at all either. All right, so next up, let's look at the Whammy. All right, so on the FM9, we have a pitch shifter here and it basically does the same thing as the drop tune portion of the Whammy DT. Uh, this virtual capo lets me shift the tones from what my guitar is in right now is B standard. <laughs> down to as many pitches as I want. And you can do the same thing on the whammy as well. So let's do a little bit of a comparison of these two. We're gonna be setting both of them to two half steps down, so one full step. And for most pitch shifters, that's probably as far as I would wanna go in terms of like playing a whole song. If I'm using it for an effect, I would go probably further. After two half steps, you're gonna run into signal degradation. It's gonna not sound quite as nice anymore. Still usable in a pinch, but not something I'd prefer if you're like looking for like tone quality. So let's first start with the FM9. I'm gonna be picking a riff that has fast notes as well as chords. So you can hear kind of how it deals with fast passages as well as note separation. <laughs> So to my ears, the Whammy DT is just slightly more bassy. Um, both of them sound usable though. I think the FM9, because of the, not having as much bass, probably sounds a lot cleaner, but it just doesn't feel quite as nice to dig into. If we're going to extremes like dropping seven half steps, then uh, the differences start becoming more apparent. <laughs> But both of them end up kind of sounding like you have like a wah pedal like on the lowest possible setting. So I'm happy to have the whammy on this board. And the biggest reason actually is that you can use a capo or a virtual capo. You can use either of these pitch shifters as like a virtual capo. And so right now I'm gonna be using a Fender Super Reverb, which is a clean amp that I have been kind of messing around with lately. And we're gonna put a capo on the second fret, which is basically just two half steps up. So this pitch shifter is gonna go two. And this is how it sounds on the FM9. So 
So yeah, to my ears, I think the Whammy handles it slightly better. So again, there actually isn't that much difference between these two in a like usability standpoint. Uh, having the physical unit, again, I can just go to the knob and select what I want. And that's just much more convenient than going through menus and doing it. Like if I don't have this connected to the laptop like I do right now, I would have to go to the FM9 editor there and go through the menus and try to find the pitch for it. It might mess up a scene or I have to make a bunch of different presets with different tunings using that. It's kind of messy. And that's kind of somewhere where I feel like the digital world just is a little bit messy compared to the like individual pedals. So if I wanna do some Gojira whammy pitch shifting or Tom Morello stuff, I can just use this, like it'll be right there for me. And it doesn't take up my wah pedal either. I'm pretty happy with this pedal board. Let me know what you think about building a pedal board for your modelers. And again, this thing right here can be also used straight into a tube amplifier. You have your overdrive, your pitch shifting effects, and the only thing I'd be missing is like delays or reverb, but I usually like keeping that with the amp because they go in the effects loop and the amp is sometimes far away from my pedal board. Something I wanted to do is just to see how different modelers take overdrives like the SD-1. I think the FM9 did a good job. Um, the SD-1 sounded natural going through the amp model here. I have always felt that some modelers do it better than others. So we'll see how that turns out. And for my curiosity, I'm gonna be trying to do that with as many modelers as I can, which I have an FM9. I have a Boss GT1000, I have a Line 6 HX Stomp, and so yeah, hopefully y'all will tune in and see how these tests go to compare these modelers, and hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for sticking around this long. That's going to do it for me, and I hope to catch y'all in the next one. Later!